Both of you talk about how important it is to protect the U.S. Constitution. Two years after losing the 2020 election, Donald Trump wrote on social media about his baseless election lies, quote, a massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution, unquote. On that subject, former Vice President Mike Pence has said that on January 6, 2021, Donald Trump put himself over the Constitution. Governor Haley, is there any meaningful difference in how you and Donald Trump view the Constitution? I mean, look, you take an oath to the Constitution, and I think what you're seeing is Donald Trump basically said that the election was stolen. He went on and on talking about the election being stolen. He said that January 6th was a beautiful day. I think January 6th was a terrible day. And we should never want to see that happen again. And I think we have to always be strong on the fact that, look, we want fair elections. And we saw some discrepancies in those elections in 2020 that should be concerning. That's why I passed voter ID in South Carolina. That's why I think when absentee ballots go out, you should be able to verify signatures. That's why I think ballots Ballots need to be counted on election day and you should get results on election day. But those that election, Trump lost it. Biden won that election. And the idea that he's gone and carried this out forever to the point that he's going to continue to say these things to scare the American people are wrong. We've seen a lot of states come together and do more election integrity bills. We need to do more than that. We still have three or four states that I'm worried about that don't have that. But at the end of the day, I will always defend and fight the constant for the Constitution. That's what we should do as Americans. I think what happened on January 6th was a terrible day, and I think President Trump will have to answer for it. So just a clarification. A clarification, a clarification, Governor. Is there any meaningful difference in how you and Donald Trump view the Constitution? Well, I mean, I think that he says in January 6th was a beautiful day. I don't think it was a beautiful day. I think you look at that. He thinks that he could go and bring in the fact that he wanted to change what the states did, the fact that he wanted to overturn the elections in D.C., those votes happen at the state level. You don't ever allow in D.C. for those votes to be changed at the federal Thank you, level. Governor. States' rights matter. Thank you, Governor. Governor DeSantis, is there any meaningful difference in how you and Donald Trump view the Constitution? My role model for how to do the Constitution is uh, George Washington. He said, the Constitution is the guide that I will never abandon. And I remember when I took an oath to be an officer in the U.S. Navy, uh, you, you, you raise that hand, you put that left hand on the Bible, and it's interesting, the oath doesn't say that you're going to defend the shores of the United States uh, or, or engage in, in military conflict. The oath simply says that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. As President of the United States, you will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. You can't just terminate the Constitution. I mean, I know he does, you know, word vomit from time to time on social media, <laughs> but obviously I will uphold the Constitution. But, and I think it's fine to criticize Donald Trump, and I know the media brings this up a lot. Uh, but you know who else deserves to be criticized? The people that violated the Constitution during COVID to lock people out of schools, to destroy businesses, to force masks on people, to try to force vaccines. I'm gonna bring a reckoning to all these agencies, the CDC, the NIH, the FDA, they harm people in this country. And when Dr. Fauci said there Thank was you, no Governor. learning loss for kids, that's a disgrace. Thank you, Governor. There's a reckoning coming. So, <laughs> let's talk about how you view Let's talk about how you view the powers of the presidency because your opponent, Donald Trump, was in court yesterday for a hearing on presidential immunity. And Governor DeSantis, I'm wondering if you agree with the argument that Donald Trump's lawyer made in court that a president should have immunity for any conduct in office, including, as the judge asked, ordering the assassination of a political rival unless the president gets impeached and convicted by the Senate for the offense first. Well, obviously, that attorney uh, gave the case away on that on that explanation. I think the D.C. Circuit is going to rule against Donald Trump on that issue. I'm not exactly sure what the outer limits are. I don't think it's necessarily been litigated. It's not going to be an issue with me because I'm always going to follow the Constitution um, and we're going to we're going to uphold uh, the, the best traditions of the office. And, and I'm going to be a president you can be proud of. Uh, you know, I think it's important that uh, people be able to look to the president and say, hey, you know, that, that's somebody that's, that's worthy of emulating. And so my wife and I, we just view ourselves to try to, to do well for our kids and to make sure they're proud of us and we set a good example. Uh, so, so that's what we would do in that situation. But I think there's a larger issue Republicans have got to think of. It. Donald Trump's going to lose that appeal. He's going to end up going to trial in front of a stacked left-wing D.C. jury of all Democrats, uh, what are the odds that he's going to get through that? And that's even talking about the, 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 the validity of the charges. 
I don't think he gets through that. And so what are we going to do as Republicans in terms of who we nominate for president? If Trump is the nominee, it's going to be about January 6th, legal issues, criminal trials. The Democrats and the media would love to run with that. Uh, I'm not running for my issues. I'm running for your issues. We need to make this election a referendum on the failures of Joe Biden, the failures of the Democratic Party, and how we have the formula to engineer a great comeback for this country. That's what I would do. Thank you, Governor. Governor Haley. Governor Haley, your response? Your response. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Uh, the, well, the question was, do you agree with the argument Donald Trump's lawyer made in court that a president should have immunity for any conduct, including an ordering the assassination of a political rival, unless that president is impeached and convicted by the Senate for that offense first. No, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, we need to use some common sense here. You can't go and kill a political rival and then claim, you know, immunity from a president. I think we have to start doing things that are right. And, you know, Ron said we should have leaders that we can look up to. Well, then stop lying because nobody's going to want to look up to you if you're lying. But what I do think we need to look at is what has President Trump done? You look at the last few years and our country is completely divided. It's divided over extremes. It's divided over hatred. It's divided over the fact that People think that if someone doesn't agree with you that they're bad. And now we have leaders in our country that decide who's good and who's bad, who's right and who's wrong. That's not what a leader does. What a leader does is they bring out the best in people and get them to see the way forward. That's what we need in our country. We don't need this chaos anymore. We need someone who's going to be a new generational leader that brings sanity back to America.